Yeah. All right, it's time for us to take a look at some of the headlines on some of the national dailies this morning on the breakfast we begin with the daily independent newspaper mm. and the daily independent newspaper is leading with okonjo iwela worried over rising burden of debt servicing nigeria's 91.6 trillion naira debt okonjo iwela worried over rising burden of debt servicing the riders there concerned it may eclipse recurrent expenditure investments and the second rider advises incoming governors on private investment multilateral support okay that's followed by u.s imposes visa ban on nigerians who disrupted the 2023 elections On the mass trip, you have inflation rises to highest in 17 years in April. The right of there, lack of contemporary fiscal measures pushing inflation up. And that's according to analysts. Uh, you have details of that partly on that page and on page 7 of that newspaper. May 29 inauguration will defend democracy, keep internal security order, IGP. Now, that's the much we we'll take from the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, we'll move on next to the Punch and newspaper. The main story this morning is on Tinubu's inauguration, uh, and uh, the Punch uh, leads us for some military IG-1 troublemakers as court. Here's anti-handover case. And of course, Sheryl Kuti is still in the news. There's a picture of there of him when he assaulted um, a policeman and the show Kuti spends night in custody. Police plan arraignment, that's on the Punch newspaper. Above the masthead, pay rise, a resident doctors begin warning strike uh, Wednesday, that's from tomorrow. United States announces visa ban on Nigerian Paul Riggers and others as federal government suspend or spends 13 trillion now on subsidy sets removal guidelines uh, nollywood stars mon as murphy uh, for lobby is buried hudas nelson cooking smashes world record grabs global attention and the last one we'll take from the front page of the punch this morning good luck again commuters grown on lagos ibadan expressway all right from the punch newspaper we go to the nation newspaper and the nation newspaper leads with ig one's subversive element against plot to derail may 29. the writer there political actors conspiring to stop inauguration of president-elect tunubu's government and then on top of that you have life outside power is challenging igminadio saraki tell outgoing governors details of that is on page five of the nation newspaper assault on inspector detained shell kuti may undergo drug test details is on page seven nbs puts april inflation rate at 22.22 percent details of that is on page five 13 trillion naira spent on subsidy in 16 years, says federal government. The right of that, Tinubu to get guide from Transition Council. And then you have U.S. We've sanctioned those who undermined elections. Part of that is on the headline, and that you have the conclusion on page four. Now that's the much to be taken from from the Nation newspaper. And the last paper we are reviewing for this morning is The Guardian. The main story this morning, uncertainty over $2.3 billion Siemens deal as greed collapses 99th time on the Buhari, or oh, that's um, a sad one. Resident doctors declare five-day warning strike. United States slams visa ban on Nigerians who undermined 2023 election. Buhari Lawan hail Hilda on world record feet. Government kicks against move to halt doctors' migration. Buhari leaves inflation at highest in 17 years. What a way to caption that. 
assault, Kuti apologizes, gives officer 12,000 naira for vehicle repairs. Those are all the stories on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Well, we have now been joined by our analyst, our Tuesday analyst, to take a look at some of these papers on off the press. All right, we have Chris Kende Wando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the United Kingdom, joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, Chris, let's just go straight to... We have so much, so much to talk about. I, I, I am just so excited this morning about some of the topics we have on the headlines. Let's begin with this advice, this uh, worry raised, and maybe I should call it concern, by Okonjo Iwela uh, over the rising burden of debt servicing. She made that, she raised that concern yesterday. Our burden, the Nigerians, the burden on Nigerians has increased. Nigerians are worried. Um, what do you make of that concern raised by the former finance minister? Yes, it's worrisome. It's, it's something we've been talking about months and years now. Um, as of the last time, I think about last time, yeah, but, um, the report from the Central Bank is that we are using $113 million to service debt every month in Nigeria. $113 million to service our debt every month. And uh, when you look at our calculated debt, um, it, it, it goes into the into the trillions. And um, we, the, when people say debt, they forget that we also have good domestic and foreign debt. But it is more of the foreign debt that they are more concerned about. And at the point we are using practically about 80 to 85 percent of our revenue uh, to service debt. The problem now is even not just servicing the debt, but servicing the interest mm. that going from the debt. Some of the debts are spent over 35,000 years. 40 years. So it will uh, uh, definitely this this government is uh, is living in the next two weeks. And then um, most of these debts were accumulated by this very long because if, uh, from reports, when we had practically about uh, 7.2.7 uh, billion, uh, 2.7 uh, trillion in debt, uh, when a person was lived, don't forget that a person did now got relief for Nigeria and our debts. Uh, we have the uh, forgive, uh, forgiveness of whichever uh, that was right off uh, the practical pay of those debts between Yaradua and uh, between Yaradua and uh, Jonathan, it grew to about uh, uh, four trillion debts within this government. Uh, this government alone, uh, we, we, we have up to 44 trillion now. We're hearing about it, something trillion. So that is how. The level of indebtedness of Nigeria to uh, most of the good like Europe. And this government continued to, even this last day, is about just last week, the government wrote uh, the National Assembly seeking um, to pick up a loan of about $800 million again. A government that is practically out of the door trying to, and you come to realize it, and the Minister of Finance continued to justify um, uh, 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 this borrowing. But the fact, let, let's put this straight, there's nothing wrong in any, uh, any government and uh, borrowing um, most countries of the world, including the United States, borrow money um, from uh, um, banks. But the difference between what they, uh, they, they do and what we do is that when they use the ask for infrastructure development with, and also for critical sector of the economy, our own people use the ask for what we don't understand and even invest with such money. The situation where you have an AGF uh, uh, and a, a, a Qatar general that has stolen over 100 billion naira. You know that we've forgotten that case already. They say he returned 44 billion. That means we still have over 60 billion, and that case has gone. Through. So it is more corruption to be rather than um, uh, using the money for what, uh, what is beneficial. Yeah, to that, that raises a question uh, about the forces at the root you know, of shaping this debt uh, it, that we keep having? What are the forces, the root causes of this debt? Why do we keep borrowing? Are we using these monies for the supposed reasons why we claim to have borrowed them? That is exactly what I'm saying. We don't. 
If you ask them what they use the money for, they say, oh, second Niger uh, road. I say that is the only problem in Nigeria. Yeah, second Niger we are paid a road. What other, what other money, what other music can you account for this? And that is going to be a problem. I don't think this incoming government necessarily. I will tell you for you one of this the questions. Is a serious issue. Yes, you, you've also touched on the fact that we also have these internal debts states are also owing. And one of the um, concerns and suggestions that uh, Ngozi Okonjo Wella raised yesterday is that states should learn to diversify. They should learn to invest. Talk to us on that. Yes, states so should learn how to invest, but you can't just invest when you don't have money. You only invest when you have money. First and foremost, I was thinking that the most important area is for them to increase their IGR, which is very, very fundamental. If you don't use the idea, because what all of them do now is just go to Abuja every month and collect uh, and share the little money we're making. And that's it, they sit back. The only state that seems to be getting this right is Lagos State. I don't know if any other state. Lagos State is getting this sort of the idea. But before we can also do that, we also have to think out our constitution because the way the constitution is presently uh, it does not give the state the leverage and the room to be able to manage on some of these things. Most of the resources in this state are still tied to the exclusive list, which is um, controlled by the federal government. So if that can be opened up and the states um, can be able to tap on the resources within their states, just as it was in the first report, they then have pay something back to the federal government. So that is why some of us have looked at and be saying that, yes, let us uh, look at our constitution. The 1999 constitution has amended as it were. And look at some of these things that are within the exclusive list. So that we can open it up. It's already started doing that. Uh, because if you look at the current amendments, some, some of the areas like electricity um, has, been, has been moved from the exclusive uh, list. The correctional centers have been uh, moved. The area of uh, railway has also been moved. But the critical areas, which is the mineral resources, are not being uh, stimulated. Because if you have, uh, you know, if you have, if government discover good at your backyard as it were, the government, the federal government will take over that uh, a, a lot of land and probably allocate another one to you. And it's the federal government that gives licenses for that. So, But if you allow the state to be able to do that, there is no single state in Nigeria that does not have the resources that it can, it, it, it can leverage on and that it can be able to survive. But the fact also says that our governors don't think they don't have any, they don't think out of the box. They are not uh, creative in their thinking because if they are, then this issue of um, depending on Abuja every month will be it in the past. I still want to talk about uh, the IGR that um, uh, uh, the World Trade um, Organization DJ mentioned, that's was your country, you know, not several, not many states in Nigeria can actually depend on themselves or what they can generate uh, 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 internally. For instance, I know Lagos is uh, one of the states that is uh, like very focal when it comes to IGR and they can actually go without uh, going cap in hands to the federal government each month at FAC to get um, the federal allocation. Some of the states that we know depend solely of the bulk of what they have is from the federal government. For those states, what can they do in terms of IGR? How can they drive that? And besides, you talked about uh, the, the, the need to tinker with the constitution so they can actually have access to their resources but would you say that all state in nigeria is blessed uh with uh, the natural resources they can actually you know harness to get this idea that we are talking about good um yes i've discussed that up in us but let me also tell you some my brother if you move from lagos through the um um, um shagamu or uh, uh, Bini Expressway, you will see an array of green land. You will see an array of green land, natural, where you don't need any fertilizer. Mm -hmm. If most of these states invest in agriculture and um, agriculture processing plants, you can be rest assured that they make so much money. So, most states in the north, like Kepi, have very big facilities for uh, rice farming. They can make so much money from rice. While we were growing up and they still currently you used to hear about abakeleke rice. A police state can produce rice that the whole of Nigeria can can, uh, can consume and even export. There are some states that are very good in palm. In most states, my states, we used to produce a lot of palm oil. 
palm oil is more expensive now than petroleum product, than uh, crude oil. If they invest in that, they will have so much to export. Before, we used to be number one in the world. Malaysia mm -hmm. came here, picked some of our uh, nuts, and we went back, and then started cultivating palm oil. They are one of the largest exporters of palm So that is where I'm, really, I'm talking about it. The United States is the food basket of the Federation. They mm -hmm. produce land, they produce a lot of things. But that is just going beyond that. When you're coming back with culture, there are a lot of things, especially within the North, there are a lot of things that you do. The issue of insecurity must be addressed. Why? Because people are no longer going to defense because they're being killed by bandits, they're being kidnapped uh, by bandits, they are being um, uh, captured by uh, headsmen and the rest of them. So it is tied, everything is tied together. Now, we are not sure what this one. A basket of, um, I was just reading last week, that a basket of, small basket of tomatoes is now 7,000 naira. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, I yes. found it yesterday. I know she knows. <laughs> I know. Yes. I went yes. to buy tomatoes yesterday and I was shocked. I said, What is this? She said, Ah, yes. yes. tomatoes. Yes. A basket yes. is now. <laughs> yes. You were telling me the other day that she just bought tomatoes for, you were showing me what she bought for 5,000. I said, What? Tomatoes? Mm -hmm. so, it's, so you can see that this issue of creativity can come into play. One which will address the basic. It doesn't have to be oil, oil, oil. It's not every, every state that has support like Lagos. It's not every state that has uh, companies, um, companies like Lagos. It's not every state that have that can pay taxes. But in their own petty way, I, I completely you remember there, is, there used to be a time in the two states. There used to be this uh, be, I, I can't know what they call it, other palm or whatever. Long way areas of if you are going towards the southeast then, we will see them on the left of the Bolivia. Um, uh, palm, uh, palm, palm, yes. the rest of them. Mm -hmm. So it's just that areas that some of these states can invest on. So what, are, what they do, they collect this money, they collect not only for the state, they also collect that of local government yes. and share it among themselves. And all they do is pay salaries, and at the end of the day, they don't even pay all the salaries. You see, all that. That is it. So oh. that is it. That is it. So okay, let's. Let's move on to the next headline, which is on the Punch newspaper, where um, Tinubu's inauguration, military, IG warned troublemakers as caught here's anti-handover case. Uh, you know, some uh, residents of Abuja have gone to seek that, um, they, they've gone to ask some questions regarding, regarding the, the, the swearing-in of the president-elect uh, saying that they have a say they should have a say as to who leads them that whoever is coming in should at least have 25 percent of their vote what do you make of this uh, story as of today the swearing is already of the president-elect sacrosanct and he will be sworn in on the 29th of may 2023 the only um the only a person or only unit that can stop that show in is the court as it were, the tribunals as it were. Now the tribunals are sitting. Everybody that has anything against that uh, that result, we go to the tribunal to iron the case. Those that are going to court are also going to court. But the fact remains that on the, the tribunals or the courts, you know, the, some of the tribunals want to be known as courts, uh, um, election petition courts, now they don't want to be known as tribunals. So it is only those tribunals of court that can be able to determine with a bet as of today, as I swear, um, a new president will be sworn in on the 29th of May. Because the courts, the tribunals and courts have 180 days to be able to dispose of these cases. And it is it is not possible, and I'm I'm saying it um, as a graduate of court, that it's humanly impossible to be able to do this within within this period, uh, within these two weeks that the president will be sworn in. So he'll be sworn in. Whether he will remain there after being sworn will now become, uh, will be determined by the court or the tribunal as it were. And um, go governors also, we have about two governors, new governors that were sworn in on the 29th of May. So I've always canvassed, as I've always said, on this and other programs that appear that our best way, the best way to go is to make sure that we go to the Kenyan and Uganda where we are, the president elect, or, or especially the presidents uh, after the election, the issue of the cases must be dealt with or should be dealt with before the president elect um, is, uh, is sworn in, so that all this issue arising politicians and the rest of them can be done with before, uh, before.
before the swearing in. We can move, we can shift the, ele uh, the election a bit backwards to make sure that we elect a president probably six months before swearing in so that the courts can have enough time to go through these cases and decide on their decision. So that when you are entering the office, you just know that there won't be any level of distraction. In the past, before the uh, electoral act, there were instances, in fact, there was a particular instance where the presidential election petition ran for almost three and a half years, uh, three and a half years before it was finally decided at the Supreme Court. And that has been shortened by the new electoral act, mm. which has pegged it to 180 days. But as of today, I still tell you that uh, we are going to, the, the, the president will be elected with this one on May 29th, irrespective of. Yeah, it is interesting you said that perhaps six months before swearing in, because some uh, some people have said that, look, when you compare Kenya and Nigeria, we're not the same size. We're not of the same size. So what may have worked for them may not necessarily work here. But it's interesting that you have said at least six months. That should give yes. time, yes. enough that time, despite... That is why yeah. Yes, that's why I said six months. Yes, um, Kenya is smaller um, than Nigeria. May also say more. But when we give ourselves about six months, you look at the United States, uh, I think uh, the, the election comes around November and the president gets one in, I think, January or February. They have also a, 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 a lifeline of about three months. We can still do it here. So if we put it to about six months, especially at the presidential election, go to the election and give a time frame for all the issues arising from that election to be settled down, then it will be able to settle. Then also the issue of uh, this. Uh, Go to court, go to court, that has become part of our system. We will be eliminated because if you know that I will go to court before you are sworn in, then you will be able to behave yourself. Because what they do is that they get this, they get the election read, get into office, and use the instrument of office to be able to fight their cause. They will use the instrument of office financially because they have they have their hands on the teeth and have their hands on the on the money of the state. If some of them are going to use their own personal money, this issue of go to court, to go to court will be minimized. So that is why I said, let us also take up with this electoral attitude but so that we can have the people to do this issue. Is it instructive, Chris? Would you say this go to court, go to court narrative? We just really get into have it in this uh, dispensation, in this our electoral process. Because before now, you, you, the courts were not a place where people want to go to, you know. Uh, but then these 2023 elections, you're just hearing this narrative, go to court, go to court, go to court. What, what do you think is responsible for that? No, this is not, uh, this is not the first time. They've, some, they've already said it has it passed, but only that it's now more pronounced this time around. Yes, it's now more pronounced. We know that yeah. President Buhari, for instance, yeah. went to yeah. court yeah. in his time. Yeah. We also know that Chris... Not, um, not yes, you know that Buhari went to court three four times. And he failed. In fact, he has to start crying on national television that he did not contest again. <laughs> we forgot. So, there's practically no election since 1999 that Warren participated in that thing which court. Articles has also been caught for all the times that he has participated in this. But the fact is that it is the because of the fact that people believe that they will not be able to get, get justice in court. Um, and that is why everybody say go to court. And you have you know you hear that saying that. That is a local palace that where you see somebody they say go to court, my brother in my family and I be judged. But that is that is neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. That is only way to go. But it is I I I I always say that it is rather unfortunate that after millions of millions of Nigerians have wanted, two, three judges will just sit down and, and not an election. Mm -hmm. that millions of Nigerians are determined the fate of Nigerians. That is not the way to go. All right, and sure. can go to when the electoral uh, process is transparent mm -hmm. enough. For everybody, if people view that they lost um, fairly, most of them go to court. You saw what happened in 2015. Um, um, President uh, uh, um, Bill Jonathan said he accepted the result. He believed that he lost fair and square as a sitting president. I didn't go to court. Mm. But some others, uh, you're going to realize that the electoral body combines with um, politicians and ring the election. And what other option do they have than to go to court? That is very problematic. All right, I just hope uh, that someday soon we'll actually move uh, away from the courts deciding the outcome of um, you know, outcomes of elections for us in Nigeria. Well, I just hope we could just go to polls and uh, without the elections being rigged or mad with irregularities and the, the clear winner will be given to us without the need for uh, redresses here and there. But let's just move on for sake of time. I'm Chris. Uh, another story uh, still related to the election matters that is making front page across some several papers is uh, the United States announcing uh, visa 
ban on Nigerian pool riggers and others. Let's share your thoughts and Chris, just how far would that go in actually, uh, well, I say mending uh, our rickety election, uh, electoral process as it is. Yes, we before I go to that, uh, before I forget, I know you guys have discussed it. Let me quickly chip in uh, and congratulate Hida. Um, on our source, the world record that she just, uh, just delivered to Nigeria, 100 hours of cooking. Mm. Uh, just on I didn't go there to eat that rice and uh, the guy. Uh, a lot of people had a taste of it, and so I congratulate her. And I hope that uh, the, the Guinness Book of Records we ratify that as quickly as possible. Otherwise, when we had that of coffee um, dancing competition, we need to empower that of that to that pass with pride as quickly as possible. Now to the issue uh, of um, the the star band. Yes, uh, we have uh, agreed. Uh, I, I totally accept that and agree with that. But the question you're going to ask yourself: Will you stop our politicians from doing what they do and rigging election? No. The only way we can we can stop a long, a long way stop it is the name and shape. Just don't tell me that you have certain people. I know that you're using their policies to keep the votes, but if you tell us the most of Nigerians that we are being, that this is a ban, it will stop a lot of them from doing what they are doing. Uh, this is not the first time uh, the United States will do that. Uh, they never tell you, it's only go to them passes and so or whatever it is. But you need to know his name. You know why I say that? In the United States, we have very sanctions certain individuals across the globe. Let's take example in Russia, the United States sanctions certain individuals involved with the Ukrainian war. They mentioned their names. Their names were mentioned. And they also they said that their accounts were frozen. And some of them were also issued this ban. So if you are doing that with other countries, what we'll stop for you from telling us who are those that participated in the election, who in the election, who were in the process, uh, 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 read this uh, 2023 election. Let us know them so that we shame them. So that the others that who want to try it in 2027 will not do that. Except we do that, then all this is just uh, for me is a uh, distinct uh, utility. We need to know them. Yes, the United States, if you don't do if you find them from the US, they go to the United Kingdom. Some will go to France, some will go to Germany, and Dubai is still there, it's still there heaven. They will go there. So they stopping them from going to America to be not so far. All right, let's go to uh, another headline on the Punch newspaper. The doctors are warning that they'll go on strike. Chris, we talked about yes. this about two weeks ago. Yes, we did. Yes, we talked about it. And so now they've given another warning. They'll be going on strike yeah. tomorrow. You know, you know, we know we discussed that few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is that it was just two days one strike. Right now they're going for a party week. And after that, you're going to have total uh, strike. But let me also shock you, man, that the latest research shows that within five years, 75,000 nurses and midwives have moved out of Nigeria. That is the latest report. 75,000, 75,000. That is alarming. And it is that, that you are talking about an average of 12,500 or about 13,000 moving out of the country on a yearly basis. Hmm. That you now ask yourself, what is the strength of our, uh, of our uh, health sector? Here? How many, how many of them do we have left? Yes. Yeah, how, many, how many do we have? But the doctors have issued a strike. You know, we are talking about the issue of increment in salaries of certain categories of federal workers and the doctors were excluded. Yes. So this may be a part, also part of it. And I hope that the government will be able to uh, handle this. But I doubt what the government can do. This government has barely two weeks to go. And uh, I personally will just appeal to the doctors to shape whatever strike they have and wait until the new government comes in in two weeks' time. They can go into negotiation with them. If this government now is there, you can be able to impact. But embarking on strike two is just before the this government is just at the at the uh, is at the gate. They are the gate. At the gate. It's just it, the, the gate. lounge. And what whatever they agree with you, so that we don't have the same crisis we have with ASU. You know the problem with ASU that ASU had with this government was not negotiated under this government. It was negotiated under the good Lord Jonathan government, and they brought it forward. And this government is the oh. We are not the ones that negotiated this thing. But God, yes, we know that government is a continuum. But there's limits to what we can do. So let the doctors, I will appeal to the doctors watching us to please shape this strike and just give this incoming government some time to get settled on that. Then they can move forward their grievances. Then tied to that is the federal government just came out yesterday to say that 
it is against the bill being sponsored by the National Assembly to stop doctors from moving out of the country after graduation. The Minister of Labor um, came out with that uh, statement yesterday, and uh, I hope that is what is going to be. As I said before, we cannot force anybody from moving, stop anybody from moving out of the, of the country. That is the breach of his fundamental human rights as a Nigerian, as a shrine in the 1999 Constitution mm -hmm. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as a Nigerian. Oh. Yeah, so we hope that they would listen and not go on this trip because at the end of the day, it is the masses that actually suffers all of this, not even the government. First of all, the government, as you've said, on their way out, this particular administration, so not much may be done, if at all anything. And then at the end of the day, if they do not do anything about it, then it would have been more or less an exercise in futility where only the masses have suffered for nothing. Exactly. Oh. It is. All right, so we'll slide on next to the nation, uh, Chris. Um, lots of uh, wonderful stories there. But let's talk about the subsidy, uh, amount spent on subsidy in 16 years. Uh, 13 trillion naira spent on subsidy in 16 years. That, that's what the federal government is seeing. And uh, this year, we were told that subsidy was supposed to be removed uh, next month, and it was suspended. Now, there's an incumbent administration. So far, the, the, the country has spent this amount what do you think uh, the incoming administration should be doing concerning this issue of um, subsidy removal? The subsidy is the big elephant in the room. Very, very big elephant in the room. Um, so, and it's just like uh, an elephant in a glass shop. Um, you just have to be able to know how to guide it out of the shop or else we destroy everything in the shop. My personal opinion is that, yes, subsidy should be removed, but it should be a gradual removal. Um, mm -hmm. The way our government wants to go about it wants to be very, very. It's something we cannot, we can, we cannot do it. We should do away with it completely. I totally agree that something because it's not that because of the fact that benefit from that, because of the level of corruption associated with subsidy. That is the problem. Now we initially we started with the states and said that the states are not having enough. You know, if you remove subsidy, Nigerians will have the state will have enough at their. Uh, at our disposal to um, deal with it and um, uh, be able to provide necessary uh, amenities. Doctors are going on strike because we don't have money. That is also part of it. So I will rather I will advise the incoming government. Yes, the incoming president, well, I meant, you know, we said it categorically during his uh, uh, campaign that he will remove subsidies. Even, I think he even said from day one. But I don't think we should be able to get that once we, because if we remove subsidies like that, Every other thing will be affected. We are going to buy fuel at, at the point we are saying they said we are going to buy fuel about 600 or 700 naira per liter. But that will affect everything in Nigeria, including um, food and even than services. So transportation limits. I, I, I look forward to a gradual uh, removal. For us to be able to remove totally, we have to revive all our refineries in Nigeria. Make sure that we are refining at full capacity and build new ones. If you're able to do that. What we are spending so much in importing fuel is going to reduce if we be able to revive our refineries. What are the, we are the country, the only country in the world, as I said, that normally say, that produces crude oil and at the end of it, we import petroleum products. Most other countries don't do that. Then, the third link to that is that to come to the 2nd of May, this, the ever expected um, Dangote refinery, the biggest refinery in the whole of Africa. Is going to come on stream, and that also is going to affect our importation um, of petroleum products. So we are going to have refined products in Nigeria, and uh, that also uh, be able to help out in this so much, uh, so much uh, foreign exchange that we spend in importing uh, petroleum products. And that will be whether that is going to solve the problem is not what I mean. because I still believe that if Dangote is the only refinery that is refining petroleum in, in the country, then we are going to have monopoly. And we are going to be at the back of uh, back and call of um, Alaji Dangote. What, whenever he decides that I want to increase his uh, prices, we all will pay. Uh, just as we have seen some level of monopoly in certain sectors, where Dangote has the, uh, the monopoly. But the final decision is for us to revive our refineries. This government pro um, promised reviving refineries and building new one. In the whole of 20, from 2015 to date, eight years, not a single refinery was required, despite the billions and billions of naira that we voted for uh, 
uh, for the refineries to be revived. And that is where I think that ESG has said time, time. That is where ESG should be focusing its attention. These billions and billions. Uh, yes, I know that their focus is now on Yahoo. Yahoo. Those are the smaller boys. Mm. They are huge. That's, yes, those are the smaller boys. Somebody is so 1,000, 2,000, and you are parading and going around and shouting. They yeah, are you know, Chris. In Nigeria. There are billions and billions that the ESG should be focusing on. That is where the new money is. Yes, Chris, you know, is. you know, I read, an, uh, I read a report by uh, OPEC that Nigeria produces, NNPC produces just 8% of the oil we use. That is so you can that imagine. We have four refineries, and NNPC is only accountable for eight percent of the oil we, we use Let in the me country. Tell you, if EFCC focuses its attention on NNPC alone, in the next one year, it won't be able to finish the job with the level of corruption in that. Even in the, even in the, in the power sector, go and see how much we expended to get power. That's why the fact that we've uh, this thing, the subsidies being given. There you will come to look at even various organizations. I have told you of an instance of a particular, a one particular AGF stole over allegedly to over hundred billion. One minister that was minister That's of dollars. power. Mm. Uh, yes, minister of uh, the last uh, the one of the ministers, ex ministers under this government has just been arrested for stealing allegedly twenty two billion. Let me give you a math. Uh, you know, you not, let me just put this with this math. If you have one billion in your account and you start spending fifty naira, fifty thousand naira on a daily basis, in the next fifty years you will not be able to finish one billion. Go and do that mass. One billion, fifty thousand every day. That is where somebody stole over one hundred billion. Huh. One God, you can see that these guys are just they are, they are just crazy. Sorry for the use of word, you know. So those are the areas I expect the EFC to focus on, and even ICPC that practically has gone to sleep. And that is why I also feel that most of these agencies should be matched. And that is what the next government should be looking at. I don't see the, what ICPC is doing, that uh, EFC is doing. They can be able to match them and increase their uh, portfolio and have enough personnel to be able to carry out the job. I don't know what ICPC is doing. Spending money on ICPC, spending money on EFC, but at the end of it, we're not getting the basic result. This incoming government should be able to look at the recommendation of the Onrosoya uh, panel. If you remember that panel, he came out with... Uh, Reorganization of ministries and private sector. That issue must be looked into by the incoming government and implemented as quickly as possible. All right, Chris. Before you go, talk to us about what you think uh, concerning Shen Kuti's uh, crisis. If I to, if I can put it at that, you know, you saw all that's played out. It's on the headlines. Um, he submitted himself at the police station. We saw him in handcuffs yesterday. Um, what, what do you make of all of that? His attack on the policeman. All those. All that we saw playing out over the weekend. Men, men I know you asked that question. I know you asked. And uh, I know you because you know my pet. Um, <laughs> for, over five years, for over five years, I was the artist and promotions manager, uh, uh, promotions manager of one of the biggest Nigerian music companies, Sony Music Nigeria, in the, in the 90s. And at the point, I was managing over 15 Nigerian artists. Shana Peters, Majed Pashe, um, Salah Abdeni, named them. Um, so many of them, and I know the, I know the mindset of artists. Hmm. Uh, but what she did, what she did, well, is it, inescapable. It, it goes beyond any explanation. And to have even come out, why we are even trying to see whether uh, we can be forgiven for what he said. Another video came out where he has said that he has been slapping this man. Hmm. It's only Nigeria that you can do that. Can she go to the United States and slap his policeman in the UK on the United States? If, of course not. Policemen have been killing, shooting people in the US, especially blacks, for no just reason. We forgot the Black Lives Matters. That was there was a black man that was killed in the US, and the guy didn't even do anything. So if because of the level of impunity here that they feel that they can get it with, and that is why they're doing what I think the full weight of the law should be uh, visited on him so that they can learn his lesson. Um, it should be the energy he used and the size he do causing all this unnecessary distraction. If you put it into his music, I'm sure he can do it. Oh, thank I, I you, Chris. Appeal, yes, I also want to appeal to Nigerians that um, the, the name Fela is a big We have so many of his students that have been very well. Um, Femi has been very, very good ambassador of this country. Even his son, Imade, has been yeah. very, very well. And so if you don't just use the uh, Imshewu uh, attitude to be able to rubbish that legend, Fela thank is you. A great. 
Thank you so much, Chris, for your time. It's always a pleasure to listen to you analyze these headlines, especially on Tuesday when we have you. Thank you so much Thank for your time. Thank you very much for having me, and do have a wonderful day. Ahead. You too. Chris Kendewando is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, and he's joined us this Tuesday on Off the Press to take a look at the headlines on some of the national dailies. We'll be right back in a moment to go into our very first hot topic. And do not forget, we have Mazi Sam Ohuabunwa taking a look at the burden of Nigeria's debt on the citizens this morning on The Breakfast. Stay with us. <laughs>